It was the bloodiest day in Paris since World War II. Mes chers compatriotes, my dear compatriots, what happened last night in Paris and in Saint Denis by the Stade de France is an act of war. The carnage begins at 9:20 p.m. Paris time. The French National Stadium, France versus Germany, and suddenly. Explosions rock the stadium as millions watch on live TV. Inside, French President Francois Hollande. Cameras catching the shell-shocked crowd of 80,000 flooding onto the field and then out of the stadium. Soon the chaos spreads to bars and restaurants across the city. Dozens of innocent people are about to die. 9.25 p.m. Gunmen open fire at a bar and restaurant. Total carnage. 15 killed, many more injured. The attacks continue at bars and restaurants all around Paris's popular 10th district. 9.36 p.m. Shooters in a black vehicle spray bullets into a popular bar, killing 19 people inside. 9.40 p.m. A concert for the Eagles of Death Metal, a popular Southern California band, transforms into total chaos. Inside, systematic slaughter. The gunmen firing into the crowd as French SWAT teams prepare outside. 89 killed as the gunmen yell, Alu Akbar, Arabic for God is great. 12.20 a.m., French security forces launch their assault. Inside, two of the gunmen detonate suicide bombs. A third gunman, shot by police, and the explosives he's wearing, detonates. And it's horrible. It's like war. What? Crazy. Maybe this is just a nightmare, this is not true, and you're like, no, no, this is true, don't worry. This is happening right now. We are having a third world war. In all, more than 125 dead, hundreds more wounded, sending a chilling message and possibly triggering a whole new chapter in the war on terror. We're learning more now about French military retaliation for the Paris terror attacks. French fighter jets pounding ISIS targets in its self-proclaimed capital of Raqqa, Syria. The French Ministry of Defense said 10 of its Rafale fighter jets uh, dropped 20 bombs on strategic targets inside Raqqa. Those airstrikes began Saturday night, just 24 hours after the Paris attacks. The French aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, leaves for the Gulf from Toulon, France in the coming days, and the USS Harry Truman is departing Norfolk today for the Middle East with her entire battle group. There are new reports that ISIS fighters who control a dam are reducing the flow of water to government-held areas in Iraq's Anbar province. Yeah, John, ISIS using the Euphrates River as a weapon, trying to consolidate their control over parts of Anbar province. We're hearing reports out of Baghdad that in some parts the river is down several meters as ISIS has closed 23 of the 26 gates at that key and important dam. By reducing the water flow from the Euphrates, ISIS and the insurgents also gaining greater freedom of movement since now they know where and when they can cross the river. It sort of just adds uh, an ability to attack government-held areas that they didn't previously had. ISIS has closed off a dam north of the city. Water, the ultimate weapon in this blistering desert. The dry riverbed also providing a potential route to attack those pro-government towns.
the early hours of a long and awful night, landmarks the world over lit for France. Social media filled with symbols of solidarity under the hashtags Peace for Paris, Pray for Paris. Tears shed for a nation in shock. And as the true horror of what happened here became clear, Europe's leaders coming out one by one, united in sympathy, determined not to let the terrorists win. We are crying with you. We will join you in the fight against those who did something so unfathomable to you. Nous sommes solidaires avec vous. Nous sommes tous ensemble. We stand with you, united. Today, we are all France. We are all together in this fight, and we are going to win. This is an attack not just on Paris. It's an attack not just on the people of France, but this is an attack on all of humanity and the universal values that we share. It's an act of war committed by a terrorist army, Daesh, an army of jihadists against France. We are reminded in this time of tragedy that the bonds of liberté and égalité and fraternité are not only values that the French people care so deeply about, but they are values that we share. Nous sommes solidaires avec vous. Nous sommes tous ensemble. We stand with you, united. And then suddenly, in a flash, there was chaos. Friday was a night of shock. Saturday was a day of mourning. But on Sunday, we felt determined today to come out to take our lives back. As France prepares to up its military offensive against ISIL in Syria with the arrival off the coast of its nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle and its 36 planes, this week sees President François Hollande reinforce his diplomatic offensive as well. He plans to have a series of meetings in the wake of Friday's UN resolution calling on all able members to fight against the Islamic extremists to stitch together a grand coalition. I understand well that countries do not share the same interests, the same vision, even the same allies, but what is at stake is to put an end, to annihilate an army that threatens the entire world. First up will be Britain's David Cameron. Hollande meets with him in Paris on Monday, and it is likely that Cameron will attempt another vote later this week. Cameron is now back in London to make his case, whilst Hollande will take his message to President Obama at the White House, before meeting Chancellor Merkel on Wednesday and President Putin on Thursday. Hollande is calling for a grand coalition of superpowers against ISIS.
Since the deadly attacks in Paris, the Russian leader called for the world to unite and ordered his navy to aid a French naval force streaming towards Syria. And President Putin promised this was just the beginning. We will search for them everywhere, wherever they are hiding. We will find them in any spot on the planet and we will punish them. MEPs sing the Marseillaise as a tribute to those killed and injured in last week's attacks in Paris. France's EU minister Arlem Désir stood alongside EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini. A minute's silence was also observed. Parliament President Martin Schulz said dignity and respect are the best response. First up, the Vatican and Pope Francis condemning the actions ISIS says they've taken in France. In a statement, the Holy See says, quote, we are shocked by this new manifestation of maddening terrorist violence and hatred. This is an attack on peace for all humanity. It requires a supportive response as we counter the spread of homicidal hatred.